I think it's fair to say that this is probably, for Liz Truss or Rishi Sunak, the most difficult economic inheritance for an incoming prime minister, probably since Margaret Thatcher in 1979. Inflation forecast yesterday by another firm, analytic firm, to potentially hit 22% next year. That is worse than the 1970s. We talk all the time about the 1970s. 15%, 16%. 15%, 22%. Yeah. And it isn't just energy prices. That is food forecast between 10 and 11% inflation. The real cost of inflation for the poorest people being even higher, the real terms inflation rate for the poorest being worse than for the richest. But just to go through some of those problems quickly for the new Prime Minister. Inflation, how do they keep prices down? Energy, not only how to reduce the cost, but potentially even how to keep the lights on themselves. Going into winter. Going into the autumn and winter. Strikes, how to keep people in work and frankly preventing much of society from grinding to a halt. Europe and Brexit, how to settle the Northern Ireland protocol. Linked to that, the question of the union and continued questions over Scotland in particular, but also Northern Ireland as well. The war in Ukraine is ongoing. Whoever wins is going to have to negotiate a very difficult relationship potentially with Washington, with the European Union, in the context of that war. And that's not even an exhaustive list. No, I mean, you haven't mentioned the health service, ambulance waiting times. A friend of mine swallowed a wasp and rang for an ambulance and they said it's going to take forever to get here. You could have mentioned sewage on the beaches. You could have mentioned uh, defence spending, given that the, the Britain will have to restock having supplied so much uh, ammunition to Ukraine. It goes on and, and on. And all of these things intersect, right? So when you have inflation at 20%, say, let's imagine it gets to that exorbitant level, that impacts in terms of the public services. That impacts that schools then suddenly have to also Schools, hospitals are all, of course, subject to inflation as well. Yeah. Their budgets either have to effectively be uprated, which has huge impact on the public finances, or on a per capita basis for patients or for school children. Basically, the quality of the service they're receiving continues to decline year after year. Mm -hmm. And that impacts all the public services enormously. And I guess the politics of this, Lewis, is wh whoever becomes the PM have said there won't be a general election. So we're down to one candidate or other who's only been voted in by a fraction, 0.42% of the electorate, and doesn't even have the overwhelming support of their own colleagues in the Conservative Party. Indeed. So I think there are two senses in which, as well as the economic inheritance being the worst of any prime minister for some time, the political inheritance is the worst of any prime minister for many years as well, in two senses. One, Emily, you're right, you've alluded to it. This is obviously a prime minister who will be coming in without any democratic mandate from the public. They will have been voted in by the Conservative Party itself, 160,000 members. But on top of that, a really difficult situation in terms of the parliamentary arithmetic as well. Because what we've seen in 2016, say when Theresa May became PM, or in 2019 when Boris Johnson did, they had the overwhelming support of the parliamentary party, two-thirds, roughly, each of them. Whoever wins is only going to have the support of about a third. The News Agents. This is a Global Player original podcast.